My Nine presents NJ Inc. Hi everyone, I'm Brenda Blackman and welcome to NJ Inc., a show about Garden State standouts who took their big ideas and turned them into even bigger success stories. We have a great half hour of television coming your way. We begin tonight with New Jersey native A.J. Kubani. His name may not sound familiar, but chances are you've either bought or seen his products. With just $7,000 and a hunch, he started an empire. His company just celebrated their 30-year anniversary, and their sales just hit the $1 billion mark. But just how did this part-time pizza delivery boy do it? Take a look at this incredible Garden State success story. His merchandise is everywhere. Light as air, cuts like a razor, and food slides right off. Since its launch in 1983, Telebrands has created products that have become household names. Introducing the all-new Flipjack Pancake Pan by Orgreenic. A booming business that sells everything from the pet egg. The pet egg is the world's number one selling callus remover. To the pocket hose. You just turn on the water and the pocket hose grows and grows and grows into a full-length hose. Its founder, A.J. Kubani, has certainly taken the infomercial world by storm. His Bergen County, New Jersey estate certainly boasts success. From the glistening chandelier to the pristine pool to the elegant family room. His lavish home is for many what the American dream is all about. But it's how this multimillionaire began that makes his success story all the more inspiring. He grew up in Lincoln Park, New Jersey, a small suburb of mostly working class families. One of four brothers, his parents migrated to the United States in the 1950s. Were your parents always supportive of your ideas? My parents were very supportive. In fact, my father is a, is a serial entrepreneur as well, so it runs in the family. At just eight, AJ already had business on the brain. I think I was eight years old when I first started uh, shoveling driveways to make some extra money. His first investment? Paper route I bought from my neighbor. I bought the paper route from him for $20. And uh, it was a good deal because I made $10 a week, so I recovered my investment in just two weeks. And just like that, he got hooked on making money. Gubani held down many part-time jobs. Now, even as a busboy, the, the amount of training and attention to detail that the busboys were taught during that job really taught me something about managing a company, that every little detail and every job is important. Also important was education. Gubani attended Montclair State University. He was on the verge of graduation, but the year was 1982, and an economic crisis had paralyzed the country. But the dark cloud of unemployment hangs over the lives of 11 million of our friends, neighbors, and family. There's double-digit unemployment, and the economy was in shambles, and employment was actually higher than it is today. It was just awful. So the prospect of getting a job directly out of college was almost non-existent. Kubani's mind was on overdrive. I worked hard and I saved a lot of money. So the, by the time I was a senior in college, I had $20,000 in savings. So I thought about how could I invest this money in a business? Uh, a big, fast-growing franchise in the early 80s was McDonald's. You know, McDonald's was just spreading like crazy, so I, I called up McDonald's and asked about getting a franchise, got the brochure, got all the information. The problem is that it was a half a million dollars for a franchise. I only had $20,000, so I couldn't do that. Even being a taxi cab driver was out of his financial reach. It was a $35,000 investment. I went to my parents and said, can I borrow $15,000 to get a taxi cab? And they looked at me like I was nuts. <laughs> they said, are you crazy? You just went to college. But it wasn't long after that rejection that his morning cup of joe and a love of Brooke Shields would turn his fate around. And I saw this great picture of Brooke Shields on the cover. And I was a fan of Brooke Shields when I was in college because she was you know, the hot, you know, sexy symbol of the day and appealing to college going men of those days. <laughs> so anyway. I, I said, all right, I'll buy the National Guard for the extra 65 cents and stuck it in my sort of book bag. 
And it was that National Enquirer that would finally give him the opportunity he was looking for. I started thumbing through the National Enquirer. And I started to see all these advertisements, these mail order ads, you know, for different products. I said, boy, this looks like an interesting business. I could probably afford to buy an advertisement in the National Enquirer, find some product to sell, and then people will send me money. That seems like a good business. So I got the idea. I got the bug. His first ad cost him $7,000, and his competition was the Sony Walkman. I never understood why the Sony Walkman was so successful. I couldn't believe that people were paying 60 bucks for an AM FM radio. So I said, all right, I got the idea. I'll sell an AM FM radio with stereo headphones and compete with Sony. He placed the ad and waited. And at the end of the day, I just broke even. Just by writing an ad and offering a good product at a, at a good value, I saw that people were willing to send me money. In 1983, Telebrands Inc., based out of Fairfield, New Jersey, was started. Their first financial success? These slippers with little bumps and nodules on the bottom that people would wear, they're kind of uncomfortable, but people like them because it sort of massaged their feet and gave them some acupressure, and the people bought them. You know, so that's a pair of massage slippers for $10. I advertised that. Gubani was finally making money, but he was thinking bigger. His products were about to hit the tube. The Windshield Wonder makes cleaning windshields faster and easier than ever before. Infomercial. Introducing the new patented Go Duster. After infomercial. Hi, Billy Mays here for the Jupiter Jack. His brand was growing. He eventually became the infomercial king. Do you like that title? I don't think I, I deserve to be the king of anything. You know, I, uh, I, you know, I look at it, you know, I, I'm, I'm satisfied with what I do. I work hard, I get rewarded in a nice way uh, by selling products that people like. And people definitely liked Kobani, but it was his next move that revolutionized the industry. I thought, you know, we should remind people that this, these are the glasses that they saw on TV. Next on NJ Inc., from ads to TV to retail, how Kubani got his products in some of the biggest retail chains in the world. Plus, the woman behind Telebrands. We always disagree on many product ideas. <laughs> That's nothing new. Their arranged marriage and how she catapulted Telebrands internationally. Welcome back to NJ Inc. I'm Brenda Blackman. You've met the man dubbed the infomercial king, but just how did AJ Kubani transform the late night infomercial business into a retail phenomenon? Believe it or not, it all started at the casino. Take a look. If you've watched late night television, chances are you are probably familiar with Telebrand's products. But just how did these typically phone order products end up on store shelves across the country? As Lady Luck would have it, it all began at a blackjack table. While sitting at a $5 blackjack table in Atlantic City at Resorts International and having a discussion with a blackjack dealer, and he said, what do you do? I said, well, I sell this product called Amber Vision sunglasses on TV. He goes, Amber Vision? Everyone knows Amber Vision. And actually, that triggered the idea that this product could sell in retail stores. And just like that, Kubani took his ad and phone order business to a whole other level, as Seen on TV was about to be born. I thought, you know, we should remind people that this, these are the glasses that they saw on TV. Introducing Ambervision, an amazing breakthrough in vision technology. They're amazing. I said, we should put as Seen on TV on the package. With your perfect poly, you're never by yourself. After struggling to get retailers to agree to carry what he calls low-tech gadgets that people love, he finally got his first bite, and the rest is history. He had the guts to go and take steps, where sometimes I would say to him, AJ, this is a big chunk of change we're going to spend. Are, are you ready for this? And he would say, yep, no problem. And I would, like, hold my breath. Telebrand's products are now carried in thousands of stores across the country. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm really, at this point, at 30 years in the business, I finally figured out what I'm doing. <laughs> and I'm, I'm really enjoying it, and I think I'm pretty good at it. 
We think you're pretty good at it too, AJ. Amazing success story. But even more amazing is the woman beside the mogul. Her name is Poonam Kubani, and she is the driving force behind Telebrands International. Their products are now sold around the globe, and as fate would have it, food poisoning and an arranged meeting is what started it all. Does he have a test date yet? She is the woman behind the Telebrands empire. I run the international side of the business, and uh, I um, have taken our products to um, over 140 countries. So you have your own sort of marketing ideas and the way you look at a product. Yeah, I do. And it works. And it works. <laughs> it just does. She was a success story in her own right. But it was an arranged meeting by her parents that had her destined to change career paths. Our parents set us up and, uh, you know, it was like a blind date. And I couldn't understand why I have to meet this guy. After some persuasion from her mom, Poonam finally agreed. I just rolled myself out of bed and I just went to the airport. And I see this guy coming down, oh, I was polite and everything, but, you know, it was like, hmm. <laughs> First time around, I didn't like him. <laughs> and I, so, I think the same thing was for him too, first time around. He didn't like me either. And I meet Poonam and, and you know, yeah, she seems nice, but I'm not going to marry this girl, really. You know, she's Indian, I'm American, it's never going to work. Over the next few days, to appease their parents, they go out several times. But it's AJ's next move that changes their destiny. Like an idiot, I ordered American food. And I said, listen, you know, it's not really, it's really not a good idea to eat a burger in India because, you know, it was not as advanced like it is now. And uh, in those days, it was not really uh, that prevalent. But he decided he's going to eat a burger. I said, fine. So he got sick. I got some sort of food poisoning. And I got really sick. I was sick in bed for three days. And Poonam was there every single day. At the end of those three days, AJ asked for Poonam's hand in marriage. Poonam was soon living in the States working alongside AJ. I love developing product. I love to work with inventors. With determination and teamwork as seen on TV was about to be seen outside the U.S. So not only our packaging has to be different, our commercials have to be in that language. Catering to international consumers has certainly paid off. Last year, Telebrands raked in close to $1 billion. It's just a lot of hard work and uh, being on top of your game. The secret to this dynamic duo? I believe that your life partner is one of the most important things for your success in life. And that's certainly the, uh, the case here with me and my wife, Poonam. AJ is a genius. He can be looking at you, but his mind is already thinking of some creative idea that you think he's looking at you, but actually he's thinking something else. Still to come on NJ Inc., The Money Makers. We sold 45 million pieces so far. The Flops. Practice your putting in the bathroom with the potty putter. And the ones that got away. Terrible, terrible, terrible mistake, because it's the biggest thing ever. And welcome back to NJ Inc. We've been profiling one of the Garden State's greatest success stories, AJ Kubani. He took the mail order world by storm 30 years ago and revolutionized the industry with his as seen on TV products. But as Kubani points out, they weren't all winners. Take a look. But Table Ground has the strength to withstand hurricane force winds. I love this product so much. I was so convinced this was going to be the biggest thing. And I said, I'm going to be in the commercial myself. <laughs> Did it work? No, it was a big bomb. <laughs> His company sells over 80 products worldwide. But which products will sell, he says, is all a roll of the dice. You know, nine out of ten items that we test flop. Another memorable flop? Now practice your putting every time you take care of your other business. Just you use to practice your putting while you're sitting in the bathroom. The idea, he says, actually tested well, but sales were, let's just say, down the drain. Another potty-related bomber? Comfort wipe, the sanitary paper extension arm and holder. I thought that would be a big thing because it's something that everybody does every single day. So it's a mass appeal item, but uh, it just didn't catch on. 
Kamani takes the flops in stride. His Telebrand offices are stockpiled with plenty of products that actually did catch on. And of course, I know you must have a favorite. So which is it? The pet egg. My absolute most favorite of all time. Partly because I invented it. <laughs> Secondly, because it's such a great product. And thirdly, because it has the biggest sales of any product we've ever sold. Millions of women across America are using the pet egg to So far, it's sold 45 million pieces and counting. Kabani says there isn't much logic behind what sells and what doesn't, which is why he takes it all in stride. You have to be creative. You have to motivate yourself, and you can't get too comfortable. Through the ups and downs, this Jersey entrepreneur still maintains a sense of humor, even when it comes to the ideas they let slip away. The Razor Scooter. You know, these little scooters that you see every little kid, before they were ever in this country, they were the biggest thing in Japan. My wife and my kids said, that's the dumbest thing. No one's going to buy these scooters. Who wants to buy a scooter? So I passed on it. Another missed phenomenon? Now there's the Snuggie, the blanket that has sleeves. My excitement level is not a gauge of how well a product is going to sell. <laughs> but excitement seems to be the driving force that keeps this business thriving even after 30 years. I would rather be in the office working and doing this and coming up with interesting products than go fishing or golfing all day. Coming up next on NJ Inc. Looking to turn your idea into a breakthrough product? We'll tell you how to pitch Kubani face to face. Plus, how American Idol changed telebrands and helped aspiring entrepreneurs from around the globe. Welcome back to NJ Inc. AJ Kubani changed the infomercial world almost 30 years ago when he launched his company, Telebrands. He took low-tech ideas that solved everyday problems and turned them into a multi-million dollar industry. Now take a closer look at his tips for young innovators trying to get their products on store shelves. When you're successful, people want to be part of your success. But keeping up with inventors from around the globe was becoming increasingly difficult. We started getting inundated with product ideas from all over the country. And I just couldn't figure out how to organize this. Until an episode of American Idol sparked an idea. And I said, boy, this is great. We could, have, we could do this with our inventors. You know, have them all come in and give them a few minutes each to you know, give us a pitch and We'll do the same thing, panel of three judges. I like it. Thumbs up, I love it. What do you say, Bob? Two thumbs up. So we just copied American Idol. An Inventor's Day was born. We have inventors come in from all over the country, you know, about roughly once a month, and they come in and pitch their ideas. And it's been great. It, it only takes me 30 seconds to figure out if I like the idea or not. The one second needle was a product of Inventor's Day. So I guess check as per uh, the agreement. So many people out there, so many different ideas. Can you please give them some tips as to how do they go about making their idea into one of these products? Well, most of the inventions fail. So you don't want to waste a lot of money on one particular invention. What you want to do is spend as little as possible on each one until you know you can either sell it or make it commercially viable. Tip number two. Come up with a model or some kind of working prototype, spending as little as possible. His final tip. After you've gone for the patent application and after you come up with a drawing or a rough prototype, you have to decide. Are you going to market this yourself or are you going to present it to industry? Telebrands has become an inspiration for dreamers around the world and its leader has no plans of slowing down. I think I'm going to do this for a little while and keep on building the business. You know, we're, we're, we've hitting, we're hitting new heights in, in revenue and profits every year. For more information on how you can be part of Inventors Day and Pitch Kubani face-to-face, -face, log on to our website, my9nj.com, and click the NJ Inc. tab. We want to thank you for joining us tonight. And remember, behind every great entrepreneur is an even greater story. I'm Brenda Blackman. Good night.